Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here to bring you part three in my series on curses and curse breaking. If you haven't seen parts one and two, please do go back and watch those or perhaps review those. There is some important foundational information in those first two videos. In this video, video number three, I'm going to talk about breaking curses or healing from curses or removing curses and I'm going to go through all of the different kinds of curses I have spoken about and then talk about the different ways to break those curses or heal from them. So the first type of curse is an energetic curse and with an energetic curse the way to break free from that is going to be through energy work. Now first and foremost you can definitely do energy work on your own to release or remove these energy energetic blockages within yourself. The way that that is going to look for you is going to depend highly upon you as an individual, what you're familiar with and what works for you as a person. So one of the first things that I would recommend for energetic healing if you're going to work on it yourself is chakra work. So you would want to break down where this blockage is, where it's most um, pronounced in your life or where it's most pronounced announced in your body and then work on the correspondent chakra. Another way to release, so an energetic blockage can show up as an actual blockage in your body, right? So one of the ways to release that kind of energetic blockage can also be through movement, like dancing and like yoga, or movement that other people assist you with, like massage therapy or acupuncture, because the goal is to get the energy in your body flowing properly and to release any energetic blockage that have built up inside of you. Other ways to break or remove an energetic curse or blockage is going to be through energy healing. Energy healing can take place a number of different ways, including, but not limited to, energy work such as with spell work or magic or spiritual work and then energy work that is hands-on like a laying on of the hands such as is done in many forms of Christianity or is done in spiritualism or Reiki for instance those are just some of the examples of energy healing that can take place to cure you from an energetic curse to remove an emotional curse you are going to need to work on that on the emotional level within yourself many many times what i would recommend first and foremost is to start some heart work that can look differently for different people that can look like working on your heart chakra and releasing any kind of blockages there it can also look like actually examining your emotional state and determining do i have pent up emotions that i have not fully processed is there something i haven't fully grieved is there pain i haven't fully processed or fully completed? Are there incidents or occurrences in my life that I have not fully come to terms with? And what is it going to look like for me to come to terms with these feelings, to find some kind of closure, to find some kind of completion of these, and then see what it's like on the other side? The one, one of the most important things with this kind of emotional work or heart-centered work is first and foremost always to accept yourself and accept your feelings and emotions for exactly as they are we just accept you for exactly who you are accept the way that you feel for exactly the way that it is allow yourself to feel what you need to feel for as long as you need to feel it allow yourself to be honest with yourself about how you feel make sure you're sending yourself and others the message that it's normal to feel the way you feel and that right now you just have to feel that way it's the only way through it so those are some important foundational techniques for emotional healing removing emotional blockages or breaking free from an emotional curse 
Now, if you need help in doing that, you're going to want to seek somebody who either does energy work, so this can, can overlap with some of the energetic healing because you could seek someone who does energy work, who wants to work with your heart chakra, or perhaps a, perhaps a curandera who is going to do some ritual and some ceremony combined with some energy work for you, somebody who does some hands-on healing, like someone who practices shamanic techniques, right? and or you may want to work with a therapist, you may want to work with a counselor, you may want to um, do some kind of grief work or grief therapy or grief workshops. So there's a number of different ways that you can work on seeking support for this. Now, a spiritual curse or a spiritual blockage, the way to, to break this, break free from this, and to break this curse or to heal from it is going to be from a spiritual approach. What that looks like is going to depend quite heavily upon what your spiritual practice or your spiritual philosophies look like. So what I would recommend from my personal perspective is because I work strongly with my ancestors, I would recommend if you have a relationship with your ancestors, you go to them first to assist with the spiritual blockage. Now, a spiritual blockage can be arising from a spiritual relationship that you have that is out of balance, a spiritual um, obligation that you have or responsibility that you have towards a spiritual relationship where something has gotten out of balance or a blockage has entered that connection that needs to be removed. So the way that you would remove that, that blockage is by going to that spirit that you have the connection with and really communicating with them um, deeply and really assessing the situation through your communication with them. What do they need to remove the blockage? What do they need you to do? What do they need you to change? What do they need you to practice? What do they need you to pay attention to? What do they need you to cleanse? Spiritual cleansing is going to be one of the core practices and the first practice that I would recommend for any kind of spiritual blockage or curse caused by spiritual causes. I would start with spiritual baths. Um, a spiritual bath that I really like is the citrus bath. If I, I have other information elsewhere about that citrus bath, so I'm not going to go into all of it here, but what I would recommend is you do some research about spiritual baths and spiritual cleansing through baths. That is a very easy way to start with a spiritual cleanse. Um, other spiritual cleansing can look many different ways. People can use forms of energy cleansing in order to spiritually cleanse you. Um, that can, can be done with our bodies. It can be done with pendulums. It can be done with smudges. It can be done with a number of different techniques. So you're going to want to either get some assistance if you would prefer or do some research about that or perhaps just consult with somebody who who has other experience, right? Other ways to release a spiritual blockage or to heal or break free from a spiritual curse um, are going to entail some deep spiritual work on your part. Going within, really assessing um, when did this blockage start? When did I start feeling these symptoms? Was there any kind of um, occurrence out of the ordinary um, happening that occurred around the time that these symptoms began? If so, is there something there, something surrounding that occurrence or that event that still needs to be dealt with? Are there some kind of loose ends that I need to tie up in some kind of relationship? Perhaps some loose ends, ends that I need to tie up regarding a specific spiritual practice that I started. Perhaps there's some energy that needs to be closed up that I have begun to work with but I didn't fully complete. So there are a number of different ways that you can look at this from a spiritual practice. It's going to be highly individualized. A spiritual blockage can also be released through magic, through spell work, through spiritual support, which can look many different ways as well. 
to heal from a spiritual attack, you are first going to need to undergo some intensive cleansing. For this specifically, I would highly recommend getting help with the cleansing. A spiritual attack would be a serious situation. It's very rare, but it would be a serious situation where you would need to get some outside help from somebody who specializes in such things. For instance, a reputable practitioner in the Palo tradition would be somebody who could definitely assist with cleansing you from a spiritual attack or even assist with removing an unwanted spiritual attachment. A spirit who may be draining your energy, who may be seeking um, power from you, etc. So start there, start at the beginning with making sure you don't have any spiritual attachment still and then do some deep cleansings with the assistance of a qualified reputable practitioner and someone who's going to work with you in person rather than remotely and then go ahead and do some strong protection work afterwards. That protection work can happen in many different ways. Protection work can happen energetically or spiritually. It can happen Happen magically, metaphysically, etc. It can happen through magic or spiritual support or spell casting. It can also happen through energy work that you perform yourself on your own behalf. So if you are, um, if if you're well versed in such things, then you can definitely perform that protection for yourself through energy work or through spiritual work. You can also ask your ancestors or your spirit guides or your guardian spirits for that protection specifically if you already have a strong relationship with them and a strong foundation within that relationship. So again, this is going to depend greatly upon your level of experience, your individual practices and beliefs, and what works the most to you, for you as well as what's accessible to you. Circumstantial curses. This is like when we've been through really difficult stuff or we've been through trauma and we haven't been able to heal from it or we've accumulated residual energy. We've accumulated um, residual energy that has come from traumatic or difficult experiences that have happened repeatedly over time or we've been in places that carry with it um, strong unwanted energies that have affected us. It's mostly that we've picked up um, energy over time that still resides with us and needs to be released. Now, most of the way that energy like that is going to express itself with us is through these energetic, emotional, or spiritual blockages. So a circumstantial curse can be um, broken up in any of the ways that it manifests within us. It A circumstantial curse can also, um, what falls under a circumstantial curse is also the the curse of a place, right? It can be a home that we're in. It could be a house that we visited. It could be land that we've been on or lived on. It can be um, being around other people who have had a lot of discord or a lot of negativity and picking up that energy from them. But if it relates to a place, then you either need to remove yourself from that place or you have to very strongly cleanse that place. Now there's one... I'm not going to give a lot of specific advice about cleansing space or places, but what I will say is that if it's very pronounced, then you're just going to have to remove yourself from the place, right? Um, otherwise, there's one piece of advice that I would like to present, and that is that many people are under the impression that cleansing with sage is all that is needed for such a location. I do disagree with that. Sage is a ceremonial herb. It's meant for different purposes. I don't feel that it's the strongest thing for cleansings. I feel something much stronger would be needed if this is a serious um, situation or circumstance. There are many things which are much stronger um, one thing that I would recommend is burning a piece of sulfur in each corner of the room, being sure that all the windows and doors are opened and that you do not breathe in the sulfur. This is something for very serious situations. Burn some sulfur and then you would have to follow up with other cleansings and protection afterwards. But I'm just 
throwing the sulfur out there as something that is much stronger than sage and much more appropriate for cleansing a space when there has been um, serious unwanted energy there that needs to be removed. You're in that situation, you would also need to do some cleansings of yourself. So the place will need to be cleansed and you will need to be cleansed. And I would recommend just doing some research about those cleansings and or consulting with somebody who is well versed in the subject. Metaphysical or magical curses which are sent to you intentionally can be broken through magical or metaphysical means. And this also includes a spiritual curse which was sent to you intentionally. And in this context, I mean if somebody has sent a spirit to bother you or a spirit to um, cause some kind of havoc or discord in your life, you can basically treat it the same way that you would a magical or metaphysical curse and you can definitely use magic use spell casting use spiritual support in order to break one of those curses um if it was a spirit that is bothering you that was sent to you intentionally or perhaps that you acquired then you can consult with other spirits and ask other spirits to assist you with this troublesome spirit as well as to um, remove it and to protect you if it is simply a spell of a um, magical or metaphysical or or energetic means a, a spell cast upon you which is meant to curse you then that can be broken through spells that are intended to break curses. Okay, so I hope this helps. I hope that this makes it clear how to release and remove these different kinds of curses. Regardless of where they came from, they can all be released and removed. They, are, they all come down to blockages within us and within our lives, and we can heal from each and every one of them. So thank you so much for watching, and stay blessed.